Let's not bother with the mechanism here. Let's just draw the product. Don't worry about the mechanism. Just draw the product. Okay. By the way, it looks like we're probably not going to get to any uh, spectroscopy today because it looks like we have a lot of work to do on these reactions. So um, we'll just focus on the reactions today and hopefully we'll be able to do a good job on that and then maybe get to spectroscopy next time. Okay, so uh, let's see what to see here. So um, in any addition, you have to ask who's adding to each carbon. So what type of atom is adding to this carbon? Hydrogen. And what type of atom is attaching here? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. There's not really any regiochemistry because there's two hydrogens. The only question here is the stereochemistry. Now, um, are we forming stereocenters here? Yes. Yeah. So um, we do have to worry about that. Now, who are we attacking here? We are attacking something trigonal planar, which means there's a maximum of two stereo products. Now, let's say this. Uh, Let's say that one of the hydrogens comes in from in front. So the hydrogen would end up on a wedge over here. Over here. Of course, the D here is for deuterium. We should uh, be comfortable now with the idea that deuterium is just kind of an isotope or form of hydrogen. But it's not, the, it's not the same as hydrogen. So this will be a stereocenter because hydrogen and deuterium are not the same thing. Now, where should I put the hydrogen on this carbon if I put the hydrogen over here on the wedge? Same wedge. They come on from the same side. That's right. All right, so we could draw this product like this. If one hydrogen is on the wedge, the other one has to be on the wedge, not in the dash. Um, we call that sin or anti. Sin. This is called a sin addition. Not, not cis, but a sin addition is the best way to name this. So this is a sin addition. Sin addition is when the two things that are attacking the double bond come in from the same direction. So they end up in the same places. Uh, we didn't go through the whole mechanism here, but the mechanism does kind of explain why they come both from the same direction. Does anyone remember, just in, in words, why, why does the mechanism show why the hydrogens are coming in from the same direction? The hydrogen connect to the metal, mm -hmm. and so they're on the metal and the hydrogens, and then the ring attaches, and so it attaches the H's at the same side, because they're from the same surface. So. Yeah, that sounds right. So in order for this to work, remember this over here is just the catalyst. This is, uh, you can, there's a bunch of different metal catalysts you can use. A popular one is palladium on carbon. This just stands for palladium spread on carbon. You might have seen some other in lectures. Anyway, you usually use palladium or platinum or something like that. The key thing is the two hydrogens start by attaching to a speck of palladium. The two hydrogens start by attaching to the same speck of palladium. Well, since the two hydrogens are coming in from the same speck of palladium, we would expect them to be coming in from the same direction. So we're not going to take the time to go through that whole mechanism today because we did it last time that we met. But you should just keep in mind that since the same two hydrogens are coming in from the same speck of palladium, it makes sense that they're coming in sin, uh, from the same direction. All right, now is there going to be another product here? Well, yeah, because we're forming stereocenters. Um, the hydrogens could come in. I showed the hydrogens coming in from in front of the board, but there's nothing to stop them from coming in from behind the board here. So in the previous example, we saw where it would have been a mistake to draw more than one product, but here it would be a mistake to draw only one product. So here's the product when the two hydrogens come in from behind. But the key thing is, if one of them is on the dash, the other one must be on the dash um, to show that they're sin. OK. Uh, so this was uh, another important type of reaction. Um, so is this substitution, elimination, or addition? Addition. Addition. Addition means removing a double bond by adding two things to the double bond. Well, here we're adding two hydrogens to remove the double bond. Um, it's not really electrophilic addition anymore. We don't really have any electrophiles here. We just call it an addition reaction. Um, there's a special name for this reaction that's worth knowing. It's hydrogenation. That should be a very logical name because we're adding hydrogens. Remember that the reaction we saw a second ago was halo hydrogenation because halo hydrogenation adds one hydrogen and one halogen. But this is just hydrogenation straightforward. Hydrogenation because we're just adding hydrogens. 
Uh, and I'll just remind you that that was covered on page three, at the top of page three of the handout. But uh, since we covered that last time, maybe we won't go into detail there. So on page three, so today I actually didn't go through the entire mechanism here. I just reminded you they were coming from the same spec of palladium, but there's a good looking reaction on page three of the handout for hydrogenation. Uh, so if you want to see the full uh, mechanism for hydrogenation, that's on page three. The key point here is that we get uh, a syn addition because they're coming in from the same spec. Uh, and we should also uh, remind ourselves, what's the synthetic utility of hydrogenation? If you're doing a synthesis problem, how do you know when you need to stick into the hydrogenation? In your product, you have two pi pairs, one and double bond. And no double bond? Okay, that's a good point. Uh, of course, we always have lots of hydrogens, but if you notice, there's two more hydrogens. But let's be, uh, uh, so those are good points. Let's be a little bit more general here, though. The interesting thing here is that we have defunctionalized. Notice how our products here have no functional groups. By the way, deuteriums are not considered functional groups because they're just forms of hydrogen. Uh, this is pretty rare to end up with a product with no functional groups at all. We don't see many things that Methyl were... Methyl is not a functional group? That's right, it's not. Uh, a functional group can't just be normal carbon-hydrogen bonds. Functional group is something besides normal carbon-hydrogen bonds. So it's got to be uh, something besides carbon or hydrogen. Or a double bonds are also functional groups. That's an important thing to notice. So uh, we were saying um, this is a functional group because it's a double bond. But if you just got carbons and hydrogens with single bonds, those are not functional groups. So we produced a product here with no functional groups. And actually, um, so this is, uh, we only know two ways to do that now, pretty much. Uh, and this is one of them. So if you're seeing the product has no functional groups, there's a good chance you need to use hydrogenation. Even if you're not starting with a double bond, maybe you just have to make a double bond and then hydrogenate uh, to get rid of the functional groups. So we have to always ask, when would we know to use these in a synthesis problem? Okay, so that's our hydrogenation reaction. Can I erase this down? Okay. So let's move on to another reaction. Uh, but remember, it only takes 10 or 15 minutes for us to talk about a reaction. But you're only going to be able to use these on tests if you practice them repeatedly. You've got to find some of those multi-part problems that give you lots of practice on these reactions. All right, well, now let's think about this reaction. <laughs> 